the iPhone SE 2020 and I know at around 42,000 rupees this seems like a good deal because you're getting an iPhone that comes with a powerful and modern A13 Bionic chipset, the same chipset that powers the latest iPhones. So yes, it does sound alright but I don't think it's worthy of all that hype. Let me tell you in detail. First up, this is a phone that looks straight out of 2015 or maybe 2016. Yeah, to be honest, I like the compact form factor in a world full of big phones out there but that's it. That's the only thing I like about this design. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's an iPhone, it's a premium phone but these bezels, well, they look supremely outdated. I mean, iOS is fluid and smooth on the iPhone SE but without the navigation gestures, this just does not feel like a modern experience. Pressing this home button to go home or even go to the multitasking page is a pain. I especially miss the gesture to switch between apps. Look, this whole home button big bezel screen experience makes me feel like I'm using an old phone and not a brand new phone that I just unboxed. I know, some people might prefer the fingerprint scanner instead of the Face ID, but I think Face ID is definitely better now and just more seamless. Plus, it works better with the whole gestures UI of iOS. See, the iPhone SE battery life is a huge letdown for me. It has a modest 1821mAh battery and that just does not cut it for me. Also because it's 2020 and Apple still bundles 5 watt chargers in the box. See, in my testing of the iPhone SE, the small battery drained pretty easily. After an hour of PUBG gameplay on the phone at HDR Ultra, the iPhone SE connected to Wi-Fi lost 24% battery while heating up to 40-42 degrees. Now that battery drain for a brand new phone is a lot. For anyone who uses the phone extensively, which is pretty much everyone these days, this won't cut it. I also did a video test, the iPhone SE lost 16% battery after watching one hour of video at max brightness on YouTube at 480p. Again, that's a pretty fast battery drain. And you think of it, you can't quickly charge this phone. The 5 watt charger takes around 2 hours to fully charge this 1800mAh battery. So yes, the battery life is a little underwhelming to say the least. You get the 12 megapixel sensor, the same Sony sensor found in the iPhone 8. And yes, thanks to the A13 Bionic and its new ISP, the iPhone SE supports Smart HDR and Ported mode. And to be honest, the pictures from the phone look decent enough, but my problem with the iPhone SE is in the fact that there's no ultra wide angle lens. If you compare the two, the iPhone XR brings the new iPhone design with an edge to edge display with the notch that houses Face ID. And that means it looks way better, way more modern. Yeah, some people might hate the notch, but I think it looks modern compared to the iPhone SE 2020. Second, the iPhone XR battery performance is something everyone raves about. To compare, the iPhone XR comes with a 2942mAh battery, which is huge compared to the iPhone SE's 1821mAh battery. Now, I know the iPhone XR comes with the A12 Bionic instead of the A13 Bionic, but I don't think that makes a huge difference, especially on iPhone. Apart from that, both of these phones have 12 megapixel cameras on the back, although the XR has the newer sensor, but the SE has the updated ISP from the A13 Bionic. They also have the same 7 megapixel front camera and both come with the IP67 rating and wireless charging. I mean, I've been waiting for an iPhone SE successor for so long and when the iPhone SE 2020 arrived, I was disappointed. Because this is the iPhone 8. This phone is just Apple's way of reusing its iPhone 8 designs to gain some traction in countries like India. See, it's 2020. Bezel-less phones, ultra-wide angle cameras, good battery life, fast charging. These are all norms in smartphones. iPhone SE is hyped. But like I said, it's not worth the hype.